Welcome to another episode of Sailing Ruby Rose. As you can see, I am sat on the foredeck of the boat, hull number one. But in a few months time, this will be used for socializing. But while I sit sweating into my underwear, I want you to notice this and this. The windows are now bonded in and they are a sight to behold. But I do want to kind of update you on the progress throughout the boat because it is noticeable. So follow me and take a look through this amazing boat. The boats really are coming on. I can see the progress on a weekly basis. They do have to overcome certain obstacles. And we had a comment from someone the other day about, um, it's actually on our last video from, I can't remember what his name was, but clearly he was a bit like, grumpy about stuff. Saying, oh, you know, I'm not watching this video because clearly it's clickbait because you know, you know what the visibility is going to be like because you've seen it in the 1260. Having been here now for 10 months and watched this boat from literally coming out of the mold until what is now fit out, there are issues. And those issues are inherent in taking a boat from CAD design. And thankfully, all of you, lots of you, actually kind of pushed back against that guy and said, actually, you're wrong. You are wrong. And everyone that pushed back is correct and this isn't a binary discussion this is not a right or a wrong and therefore you know it's an opinion piece the people those of you that push back against this are correct there are intrinsic problems in taking a boat from a concept from pad drawing to manufacture in making sure that the translation is accurate and this happens at just about every single part and every single stage. So don't think for a second that just because art, ah, it looked right on pad, it's actually going to work in real life. So, you know, talking to James this morning, there are hundreds of problems he has to overcome daily in the kind of like the movement from pad to actual manufacture. And this takes into account things that sea wind can actually action directly. So for instance, if they're building a fiberglass part or a wood part that is in-house, that is easy to control. They can turn around and go, well, it's not quite right, we'll redo it. But where they've had to outsource parts, such as windows, and things don't come across absolutely 100% correctly, then they have to go and actually get everything put right. And that is not easy. In the question about visibility, I had no idea what the visibility was going to be like. It's not clickbait. And honestly, I think that really, I understand everyone has allowed opinion, but sometimes it is frustrating when I feel that people literally use a lack of knowledge and kind of like bolster their lack of knowledge with a louder voice. It's the, the Dunning-Kruger curve for all of those of you who are familiar with that concept. So actually, it is a very complicated problem building these boats. And obviously, hole one, because it is the first time, has to deal with the transition from concept and pad to actual realization. And that is why it is taking so long. And for, all I would say to you is that now I have met Randy and Denise on hole one. I've met the owners of hole three. And yesterday I met the owners of hole four and all of them. I think have walked away from this whole project with a greater understanding of how complicated this is. It is not simple. It is simple if you cut corners and you're like, ah, oh, we won't worry about that. We'll deal with that down the line. But I think as a testament to what this company is doing, they're actually going and thinking, no, that we're going to fix this now so that we don't bake problems in down the line. Also, I need to go and get the brakes checked on the bike. They're making a funny noise. I don't want brake failure here because that will be the end of the videos. So, as promised, a walk onto hole one. There's a lot to show you today, a lot to show you, and I do have to try and keep out of the way of getting the sun behind me so that I end up in silhouette. But firstly, the thing I promised you, and I'm going to show you this from inside and out, and it is very difficult to show this on camera, the windows, the big opening four windows are all in place. They are sizable and beautiful. Now these, the hinges are not, are not attached. Um, and so I, if I open these, they'll all come clanging down. But let me just peel this back and I have a real bent for pulling this stuff off of even small items. But this, 
I would say we're looking at about, you know, probably a good eight millimeters of toughened glass there, all custom made by Lumar. Beautiful opening size, probably looking about one meter 20 by about 70, 80 centimeters. We'll confirm that with James. But these two huge opening windows are very, very important as we keep talking about, as Teresa keeps talking about, for ventilation. So again, saying that actually seeming to work very, very hard of getting actual custom Lumar glass put in there. So that's super important to see. Just coming up to the side, these windows were on the trampolines last week. These are all being bonded in. And James told me today that when they bond the windows and they just leave them for two or three days before they do anything, just to make sure that the, the, the bond is complete, the catalytic bond is absolutely complete. What else have I got to show you? Aside from my tripod, there, carbon fiber bowsprit. Carbon fiber bowsprit is dry fitted and inside the longer on. So again, because we will be flying asymmetrics, because this is not a cruising boat, this is a performance cruiser at the very least, actual weight consideration is important. So yes, carbon fiber bowsprit. Um, we will be flying from that, an asymmetric and also a screecher, code zero, whatever you want to call it, but upwind sail, downwind sail. Now, let us continue to look and see what developments we can see as I whiz through here. Now, firstly, hole one, that is the traveler. That's to move the traveler. I'm not sure whether they're going with the electric one. Shall I peel it back? Shall I peel it back and see whether it's electric or not? It's electric. They're going with the full electric traveler. We're not going for that. I actually need to get some work out of my arms because my bingo winds are getting pretty damn huge. Anyway, moving forward and inside and things I do definitely want to show you. There was a little guy here doing the electrical work. The, uh, there are meters of wiring going on here. This is where the batteries are. This is obviously the battery box for the lithium batteries. There are the, there are the sorry, the, not the alternators, the inverters, the chargers there. And this is all obviously, if you remember the episode from before where they put everything together in a wiring loom, that is obviously now going all around the boat. The DC system and the AC system will be over there. Now, another thing that has happened in the last week, and I just, I'm gonna swing past, and it's, as I said, it's very difficult to show you this. This, the windows. The hinges aren't in place, so I can't, I can't open these yet, and I think James would probably crucify me if I played with the fact that these are all still being bonded in. But again, strong rubber gaskets, again, to make sure that you don't get water ingress. Everything on gas struts, but again, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Now, let me show you this. The freezers, freezers in this department. Viti Frigo draw freezers. I'm going to step down and try and show you these. There we go. Now, there was a question on one of our patron groups as to how is this going to open? Does it, can you open it effectively? Yes, you can. Two drawer freezers, deep ones. And this is just one of the freezers. I think we've specified another one over there. And then there is, we're having an ice machine as well. But this, for when we're crossing oceans, for when we have to freeze pack and freeze pack like meat, that's where they're going to go. Moving forward, the galley, galley cabinetry is in place, but I think there's another freezer that goes in here. I wonder if they put it in. No, that hasn't been put in place yet, but there's another fridge freezer there. And again, lots of electronics going in. So, as I said, batteries are there, more of the master vault system there. And we ran through with you last time, the master vault alternators that are in the engine bays. So lots going on there. I'm going to take you down into the port side hull because now the cabinetry is almost done. I need to step down because they've taken the temporary steps out. I don't want to go for a button. Whoosh. Before I move on to cabinetry, what I want to show you is that now all the windows bonded in place. So for those of you who wanted to know opening hatches, non-opening hatches, let me just talk you through this as I understand it. This still has to be bonded in, but this stern facing, this aft facing window will have its glass, but there's a small hatch in it. So port light there. The sea wind, um, kind of like signature slanty windows there, opening hatch there. So again, lots of light, lots of ventilation, window bonded in there. And then moving forward, we have these pretty expansive pieces of glass. Now we talked about this, about how, you know, the aesthetic, the view from when you're lying in bed drinking your morning coffee is going to be massively augmented by being able to see the vista from your anchorage. And again, what we're looking at here, everything, all the windows now bonded in place. So these are all in. Cabinetry is now in place here. 
So again, like little Christmas presents, we have doors, drawers, cabinetry, all being fitted. As I said, there are different workstations here. There's the carpentry workstation, there's a fiberglass workstation, there are electricians working on this. So this, and I've just moved out the way while the, uh, the, 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 the carpenters are all kind of doing their work. So this is almost complete. The catches need to go on and there's obviously some other facing to do, but we're looking at a lot of progress here in just seeing how the cabinetry for the first hull, the master, the master suite, the master suite, can we call it that, is coming on. Moving down into the starboard hull, not a lot has changed here, actually. I took a quick squiz down here before. Now what we do have is the cabinetry down there that's all in place, so we can see step up to the bed, drawers, that big storage area for kind of like, I don't know, suitcases, hold alls. And again, as a cabin, consider this is meant to be the mini cabin, the one where you send the, your least favorite child to live. This actually is a pretty sizable, nice place to be. So looking around the boat, there is a lot going on, a lot going on here. We've looked in here, all the glass is bonded in, opening hatches, lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of ventilation. So huge amounts of work going on here. And as I said, it's, it's uh, very much indicative of like different kind of disciplines coming in. There's electricians working down here. So there's the fiberglass working here, carpenters down below, and then there's obviously work on the deck in getting everything done. And I've had a quick word with, with James this morning. He's obviously orchestrating all this like a, like a conductor in an orchestra. And Danny has been around kind of working on our boat. So again, there is a lot to see. And honestly, it's all beautiful, exciting, tantalizingly close. And we are definitely, definitely, definitely now in a stage which I would consider to be 100% fit out. We are no longer in construction. It is evident that this is all coming together like the world's biggest jigsaw puzzle. So that is hole one, hole two, a little bit behind. There is a delay, I think, between hole one and two because this boat needs to be test sailed. And this needs to be made, you know, everything has got to be put together, test sailed, pushed, test sailed, pushed to make sure that should anything need to be modified slightly, that they can do that effectively before they move on to completing two, which is obviously Ruby Rose two and three and four and five, six, seven, eight. And you know, if you just swing behind me, there's, there's, there's boats galore in here. But it is now two minutes to the end of the break. It is, what is it, the 16th of November today? It is so, so hot. Like crazy, crazy, crazy hot. This is meant to be the end of the rainy season, the beginning of the dry season. But honestly, whoo, Ho Chi Minh, you're hot. So did you enjoy that? What an amazing look. It is tantalizingly close. I say this every week. We are getting so close to this boat being launched and we can move on to test sailing. However, if you enjoyed this, give us a comment, give us a like, give us a thumbs up, and I'll be back next week to show you more in the progress of the Sea Wind 1370. Take care, goodbye.